So what have we got here? All right, so we've got the hermit crab of Vionia Masa okay. from McLaren Vale, from Berenberg. Um, and so this is a new variety, it's well, semi-new, I suppose, Vionia and Masa yeah. uh, from the south of France. Um, yeah. Have a lot of fruit, a lot of viscosity. There's mm -hmm. beautiful richness feel there. It's called the hermit crab because Masa is the major white grape of Hermitage. And Hermitage translated means house of the hermit. And a hermit crab carries his house around the whole time. And, <laughs> I love the name. And there's hermit crabs. Uh, uh, on the beaches and there's hermit crabs as fossils in the limestone and so the roots are down there suck out little bits of fossilised hermit crab into the grapes and into the wine so if you can taste a little bit of minerality I say it's hermit crabs fossilised hermit crabs that you're drinking oh I love that <laughs> oh this is great yeah thank you it's very expressive yeah. isn't it the oh. Marsan gives this green mango, green papaya and pistachio mm. nut character, which is quite strong. It's only about a third of the wine is Marsala, but actually it's about half the character. Really? So Viognier I pick a bit earlier so it's not too fat. Sometimes okay. Viognier can be quite oily and hot because it's high in alcohol, but actually there's only like 13% alcohol, which is actually relatively low for Viognier. Mm. And, and, uh, and but, so mm. it's got more of a nectarine, uh, white peach and yellow peach character yeah. in, in there, and, and apricot, I suppose, too. And I thought it was apricot. That's what I, yeah. the first thing I was going to say, but then sometimes get apricot and peach mixed up when I'm saying them well, as a flavour. Apricot's in a wine. probably the dominant one, actually. Okay, I'm right then. Yeah, you <laughs> are right. I just, I just sort of assume that everyone knows, or oh, well, you just picked it, but yeah, Fionn is normally apricot. Apricot, yeah. yeah. And then it has ginger and blossom in there, too, just to mm. give a little bit of uh, mm. complexity. So this is a new varietal? Relatively new, yeah, right. only in the last 20 years. Yeah, we were yeah. the first to start planting the Avionio Macarma yes, back yes. in 1995. Wow. And um, the, uh, we, we actually planted quite a lot mm. and all our growers, and after a couple of years I asked uh, how many growers have planted it because mm. I told them they should plant it. And we had 140 acres of Viognia planted and oh. hadn't actually made a Viognia <laughs> in Maclava to know whether it worked. Right. And so we were pretty lucky. It's more than all yeah, of Condria, yeah. the yeah, biggest yeah. planting in the Southern Hemisphere. And uh, yes. anyway, it worked well and it's our yeah. biggest selling wine. Right. And probably it's quite reasonable price because we have to move it somehow. <laughs> right, right, okay. And so do you think this is going to be quite a trendy wine? Uh, it is really trendy for us. Um, mm. As I say, it's our biggest selling wine mm. and uh, um, all around the world. And uh, you know, mm. being crab sounds really corny, you know, for the hermit <laughs> crab. But actually, lots of seafood restaurants love putting it on. It's yeah. sort of one of these things. That I was going to say, would this team like well with crab? Yeah, it's fantastic with yeah, crab. Seafood. Uh, yeah, and yeah. Uh, anything that's got quite a lot of flavour, because it's yeah. got a lot of flavour as well. Yeah. Yeah. And it's quite long. And yeah. so it works well with all sorts of fishes, but even uh, Indian dishes and Asian right. dishes. So, which are quite hard to match often because of their spices. Yeah, yeah. I mean, of course, they're, they're all different, so many different types of Asian dishes. Yeah. But, but yeah, it's probably one of the best white varieties, actually, to go with those. Right. Well, being so close to the ocean, it does feel like it's, appro it's appropriate. Absolutely. Yeah. You can see it today, now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> it's if we look out that way. <laughs> no, this is lovely. Mm. 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 Cheers. Thank you. Thank you. And now, right. some dead arm. Okay. Shiraz, so 2015. This is, this is a very well-known, iconic wine. Yep, yep. This is a really most well-known wine, one of the most collectible wines of Australia, according to Langton's and Wine Arc and other mm. um, auction sites. And it's the best barrels of the best vintages, best barrels of the best vineyards, I meant to say, of Shiraz. Um, right. And uh, it's quite a structured wine, you'll okay. see. It's got lots of spiciness. The oak is really well integrated. Mm. The wine, the wine uh, doesn't is not fat and oily. Has a certain finesse, but a lot of strength at the same time. With uh, uh, you can smell the earth, a little bit of soil okay. and earth. Some really yep. old, old vines in there, giving a little bit of um, dark soot and and uh, coffee-like notes and really? chocolate notes. And yeah. um, and then palate again, the same sorts of things. You see a certain elegance and then it grows with this great spicy vibrant oh. tannin it's really really long and, and fragrant and um, and uh, with again these fine tannins and big chunky tannins because there's quite a few different ages of vines in there that give all these complexities wow it is complex I can taste all those things pretty much that you're saying <laughs> usually I'm like yeah 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 but I can cool and the flavor is long uh, wow and what do you mean by fat fat is like an oily texture this is this is not really very oily it's gutsy okay. and solid but there's a certain finesse of fragrance fruit through there whereas when it's oily it just tastes like sump oil mm. and you don't have any floweriness in it at all it's okay. just a thick gloopy yeah. and it ends very quickly abruptly those sorts of wines and they're right. usually from 
grapes that are overripe or grown in a hot climate. I see. Uh, and, or, yeah, and they usually short the tannins in quickly and you've just got like wood tannins showing and it's really okay. an attractive finish. Right, and this is, this is a 2015. It what, is. What would you say was your most recent best vintage? This one. It actually, is. yeah. Well, actually 17 is my, really? I think. Well, I haven't blended it yet. Yeah, I'm halfway through right now. It is. But I think it might be. It's a little bit more finesse than this vintage, but okay. it was a late ripening year and they've got an amazing aroma length, aroma lift and aroma mm. length. And um, but uh, I suppose in the last years, you know, 2004, 2002 were great vintages yeah. as well. Uh, 2010 seems to be actually great vintage, but you never really know what the great vintages are yeah. until they're old. Yeah. Because and the tens are just yeah. looking like they're not aging at all. Really? So it's quite yeah. They look it's still like they're just two oh. years old. So oh, it's a beautiful okay. thing. So how long would you sell it this one for? Well, we, uh, good vintages. Mm. They should last for 40 years. 40. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. They're really designed to age for a long time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So you got to hope you're still around to try it. <laughs> All your kids, give yeah. them a present. Yeah. <laughs> drink, drink, buy heaps. Mm. Just drink some mm. every year. <laughs> oh, that's delicious. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Yeah. Cheers. I have to come back for the 2017. Indeed. Yes. Yeah. <laughs>